The first objective is to observe pre-simulant parameters in the non-human primate. To accomplish this, you will perform a physical exam. First, start with the head and work your way down. Observe the eyes and note the size of the pupils. Look at the mouth, the teeth, and the gums and note the amount of salivation present. Next, proceed down to the thorax and listen to the heart and lungs. It's important to use the Ambu bag for this procedure and note the pulmonary resistance prior to giving the simulant. Work your way down to the abdomen and assess the patient's muscle tone, abdominal tone, and extend and flex the rear legs and assess muscle rigidity. Also observe the posture and flexibility of the tail. At this time, look at the palms and the soles of the non-human primate and assess whether or not there's any moisture present. This will change once you give the simulant. The second objective is to induce a cholinergic crisis. Once everyone's evaluation of the non-human primate is complete, physostigmine is administered via the vascular line. Physostigmine is a cholinesterase inhibitor of the carbamate group. It binds reversibly to acetylcholinesterase. Primary effects at the postganglionic parasympathetic nerves, also the muscarinic sites, include profuse salivation, hypermotility, urination, bradycardia, hypotension, emesis, bronchoconstriction, and increased bronchial secretions. Secondary effects are seen at the autonomic ganglia at the neuromuscular junctions or the nicotinic sites, and they include skeletal muscle fasciculations and paralysis. Physostigmine crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes a centrally mediated respiratory inhibition and possible seizure activity. Please remember never to recap needles and dispose of them immediately into the Sharps container provided. Objective three is to observe the post-simulant clinical signs. The onset of clinical signs will be nearly immediate after the administration of physostigmine. Dramatic drop in heart rate will occur, but it will be brief. Onset of muscular fasciculations will make the heart rapidly rise again. This whole incident will occur in a matter of seconds. At this point, you'll start to see clinical signs of a cholinergic crisis. Profuse salivation, beyond that induced by ketamine anesthesia, can be observed around the mouth. Pupil size also will change. Increased pulmonary resistance using the Ambu bag can be observed. Sweating on the palms and the soles of the feet will also be observed. Note increased muscle tone in the abdomen as well as the rear legs and the tail. Seizure activity may also occur. Clinical signs not seen in this laboratory will be urination, defecation, and vomiting. This is because the animals were fasted due to the use of anesthetic ketamine. Objective four, providing vital support and therapy. When the students have observed and recorded all clinical signs of the induced cholinergic crisis, definitive therapy can be provided. Atropine sulfate at a dose of 0.2 milligrams per kilogram in a pre-measured syringe is injected into the vascular line without recapping the needle. Temporary cessation of manual ventilation will allow the student to observe the atropine-induced reversal of the muscarinic clinical signs of the cholinergic crisis. Ventilatory assistance must be provided to supplement the respiratory efforts made by the animal until the animal's own respirations can maintain normal tissue oxygenation. Observations of the recovery must be noted and recorded on the animal health sheet. Objective five, observing post-therapy parameters. Observations of the recovery period include increased heart rate and character, or tachycardia, respiratory rate increasing to normal, decreased respiratory resistance, a decrease in oral secretions. However, muscle fasciculations may persist due to atropine affecting only muscarinic receptors. Additional atropine may be given as needed for the reversal of muscarinic signs at 10 minute intervals. Diazepam will be provided in the event that any animal experiences seizure activity. When all the students have had the opportunity to observe the continuum of clinical signs of the cholinergic crisis and treatment, the animal will be stabilized by veterinary staff until complete recovery, which usually takes approximately 90 minutes.